Hey Vinyl Community, Elliot here, Lazy Dogs Records, and I thought I would do a June Finds video, and uh, don't usually uh, drink beer, but uh, I do occasionally because I'm trying to promote uh, and support a local enterprise here in my little town of Lillington, uh, Beulah Woods Brewery. Has been trying to get up and running for months now, and then the coronavirus pandemic hit right when they were scheduled for their delayed opening, and that's delayed it even more. But now they're up and running, and you can go pick stuff up there and carry it home, and you can space out considerably. I'm not doing the space out seating stuff. I'm, I went and picked up uh, a few beers from them to carry home, and uh. I got this, this is Ju they ran out of labels, <laughs> so I uh, put a piece of tape on it, uh, July Moon Sour, and boy, yeah, it is sour, but I like sour, so it is uh, nothing like a Budweiser, but it's uh, it's pretty good. So, uh, if you're up ever in Lillington, Gula Woods Brewery, really good. Uh, what are we listening to? Been listening to a lot of this guy lately, Billy Price and the Keystone Rhythm Band. They found me guilty. So he's locked up there and they're carrying them off here. And this is from uh, 1982. Uh, great uh, R&B singer, Billy Price. And any of you folks up there in uh, Pennsylvania, the Pittsburgh areas where they uh, they were based out of for many, many years. He since has moved, I think, Delaware, but I'm not positive. And so they dropped the Keystone Rhythm Band name, and now it's just Billy Price Band, I believe. Still going strong. He's probably in his 70s now, because he's older than me. He may, may be in the late 60s, but he's uh, uh, still out there. Great, great R&B singer. I highly recommend uh, going out and see him, seeing him if you see him playing somewhere once the things get opened up again uh, and uh, picking up his albums. Billy Price. Anybody uh, that's familiar with him, maybe from that area, uh, Delaware, Pennsylvania area, uh, if you, if you know about him. Make some comments. Tell us a little more about him. I just saw him play a few times back in the 80s uh, when he was touring up and down the East Coast. Very good. He also uh, sang lead for Roy Buchanan for a little while. A couple albums. Livestock, I believe, is one of them. Uh, Roy Buchanan's albums. He's on there singing lead. Okay. So, first of all, I got... Uh, in our efforts to help uh, Steve Carlson, we, uh, uh, Chris, Blues Guy Vinyl, great guy. If you don't already subscribe, I highly recommend it. Uh, Chris had an a auction. He auctioned off a bunch of his stuff to raise money for Steve so he could get or do with it whatever he needed to help him after his flood. Uh, and I was able to get in just recently. Uh, they arrived a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I got uh, Slim Harpo and uh, on this side it's I'm your bread maker baby and loving you on this side. BB King, my song and friends. Elmore James, Sunny Land, and Goodbye Baby on the Kent label. I think I think I did on two of those, and he just threw one in because he's such a nice guy. So thank you, Chris. Uh, but the, uh, also got a book uh, in that auction that I've started reading. That's very good. It's interviews a radio host in Canada interviewing a lot of blues and roots related artists uh, but the the vinyl uh, LP I got in that auction uh, was this buddy guy 
and it's the first time I met the blues. It's recordings from 1958 to 1963, and it's on Vinyl Lovers, uh, limited collector's edition. I don't know how much it's limited to, but uh, it's from 2016. Great, great stuff. So, Chris, thank you. Great calls, and I was uh, glad to pick up those, those albums and glad to help Steve out as best I could. All right, I'm going to try to wrap up my five-part series on uh, on brother acts or duos, harmony duos. Uh, soon, I'll hopefully, I'll put that last episode together. One of the artists I'll mention when I do are the Secret Sisters. I love this album cover. Look at that picture. Of it. Don't you want to know her story? Uh, this is You Don't Own Me Anymore from the Secret Sisters on U.S. Records. And there are actually two sisters uh, singers. That, that picture, I don't think, is of either one of them. I think it's maybe just an archival picture or something. And uh, I had this pre-ordered and it came in. Larkin Poe, self-made man. Love these young ladies. Larkin Poe. And there's a limited edition Bloodshot Records uh, put out. Sarah Shook. Now I've shown you uh, two sh sh Sarah Shook and this Armors albums before. We've talked about them. A few people have talked about her and her group. Uh, this is pre uh, the Disarmers. This is uh, the Devil, Sarah Shook and the Devil, and uh, was just made over at Hall River at a studio in Hall River, North Carolina, and uh, maybe in 2012. Yeah, 2012. And they bloodshot since she's on that label now, reissued it in limited edition. And you jazz folks get, get me interested in jazz. And so I picked up, excuse me here, about stuff falling down. I don't want my albums to get hurt. Uh, so I picked up this Chet Baker album in New York. It's very good. I really like this. Chet Baker, Johnny Griffin, Al Haig. Paul Chambers and Philly Joe Jones is on the drums. And this is recordings in New York in September of 1958. And this is on that Jazz Images label, which uh, William Claxton was the photographer, I believe, that did all these photographs. And that's where the Jazz Images come in. Uh, they're showing jazz, uh, photographers or jazz players uh, that, that he took and when they release his these albums. And this one comes upon a recommendation from Mazzy. Uh, the Milk Carton Kids, this is the Ash and Clay. Not much to see on the cover there. Let's see, is it? No, it's black vinyl. Uh, there's the Wright Brothers, I'm assuming, right there. Uh, the Milk Carton Kids, or as I like to call them, the Milk Crate Boys. And this is on Anti Records. From 2013, and then uh, I've got, got all those from various like Rough Trade, uh, Amazon, different different uh, online sources. But uh, locally, the uh, record crate, crate with a K, uh, Adam Kirk uh, over at Record Crate in Raleigh. Uh, I, bought some records from him he does uh youtube auctions sometimes and uh, i got a couple from him via that and one of them of course the brand new album from jason isbell reunions only listened to this once so far i'm not sure it's uh the the uh decision is not final on that one i'm, I'm not sure how much, I, or where I rank it in his stuff. Anything he does is going to be good, I believe. But I'm not quite sure. And uh, the other I got, uh, Jimmy Gilmore and the Fireballs. Uh, I had a Jimmy Gilmore 
I had a Fireballs album that unfortunately I, I picked up at a thrift store or something, but the condition was just not good. And so I wanted to find, and he had this one. This is uh, Sugar Shack, Jimmy Gilmore, and the Fireballs. And then he's, uh, Adam has set up a, uh, a website now where you can actually order. Right now it's just the new vinyl, uh, but eventually he's going to have his entire inventory on there, or most of his inventory on there, I believe. And it's more of, uh, um, instead of him packing it up, sending it, you know, he's, uh, I'm assuming it probably ships directly from a supplier to, to the buyer or something. I may be wrong on that, but that's just kind of something I'm, I'm kind of assuming. But, uh, cause I bought this from him, but in a separate transaction, cause he said, I don't have it in the store, go to my website and you can, you can get it. And this is the new Lucinda Williams. And this is uh, Good Soul, Better Angels. And this was a little expensive. This was $29 plus shipping. Uh, but not that autographs are just something I have to have or anything. But she signed it. And it was a limited quantity of those she signed. And the interesting, I would have just bought it. If it, if it had been $22 without her signature, I, I would have just pay $22 for it. I'm a cheapskate. But I uh, know I checked and whether you bought it, the autographed copy or whether you bought the, the unautographed copy it was both of them were $29. So I might as well. And this comes with a, on a white vinyl. Haven't had a chance to spin this one yet. Looking forward to it. I think Lucinda is one of the great artists of our time. And then from from Discogs, uh, I was uh, trying to pick up some holes, complete, uh, fill in some holes in my John Hartford collection, and I got this John Hartford. Uh, this is head down into the uh, mystery below, and you have to look close at that. But what you're looking at is a, is a sketch of a steamboat, and then the reflection of the steamboat. You see. And they do the same thing with the title down here. It's the reflection. It's backwards. Uh, but this is this came out uh, just after um, just after uh, Julie Bell Sp Swain, uh, no Mark Twain album, which is my favorite John Prine album, came out the next year, I believe. And this this copy is on Stony Plain Records, not Flying Fish. And because of the book, Chris. Uh, I got from Chris uh, that the guy that wrote that book is the founder of Stony Plain Records. And what it is, is when uh, they have agreements with some of the labels in the U.S. and they'll uh, distribute under the Stony Plain label in Canada records from Flying Fish and Sugar Hill and different ones like that. And so this actually came out of Canada. And when I got that, I said, okay, it's free shipping, so let me pick up a few more things. Uh, it wasn't free shipping. It was free shipping. You, you paid $5, and then it was free shipping for as many more or five more records or something like that. Uh, so in order to cut down on my shipping costs, I got ended up with five records, so a dollar a piece for shipping instead of $5 for one record. Okay, uh, the sliding area. From, or the slide area by Cooter. David Lindley, say a little trend here. Uh, El uh, Rayo X. David Lindley, of course, great uh, lap steel player, is what I know him for. Jackson Brown, uh, side man, extraordinaire. Uh, he and Ry Cooter to me, I think of those guys in the same. Plain. Oh, I love this cover. Uh, room full of blues, dressed up to get messed up. Now, look at this young lady. Look at expression on her face. Uh, her daddy's coming in here and telling her she better be in by 10. And she's thinking, I get out of this house, ain't no way I'm coming back at no 10 o'clock. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I just think that's a cool cover. Good concept. Room full of blues. 
and Joe Henry, one of the great producers and a really good songwriter, and this is one of his albums, uh, Murder of Crows, which means a, a flock of crows, doesn't it? Now, what murder means in that case. Uh, Joe Henry. Uh, he's got one of my, I don't have it on, on his recording, but I've got a C, on a CD of a blues artist I, uh, I have uh, a song he wrote called, I believe it's called uh, Date for Church or Wednesday Night Date or something. But it revolves around Wednesday night services at church, a date uh, with a young lady. But does she know that? Love the way he wrote that song. Joe Henry. It, that's not on this album, but I'm, I'm going to find that eventually. And I got out this week with my mask and stopped by a, uh, a antique and vintage shop in my hometown. Uh, technically speaking, the competition, not really, you know, it's not a competition because I've got a table set up at um, uh, at a antique and vintage shop, but and this is a different one. But I went in; she didn't have many records, but uh, I went through and ended up buying a few from her. Steve Miller Band. This is from '72, I think. Recall the beginning: A Journey from Eden. His really reason I bought, she had this, Tokyo, Oklahoma, from one of my favorite singers, John Anderson. Look at that cover there. Look at that outfit he's got. Somebody tell me about this group. I just bought it because it looked interesting. Uh, Mark Allman. 73 is the name of the album. Mark Allman. Two different people, Mark. Last names Mark and Almond, not like the Almond Brothers. Almond like Almond Joy. Okay, uh, Bruce Hornsby and the Range. Uh, scenes from the South Side, and this has got uh, the hit uh, Valley Road on it. Yep, and uh, it's in real good condition. So I bought that. I like uh, Bruce Hornsby from up in Virginia. Spooky Tooth. Tobacco Road, written by John D. Loudermilk. I don't know that much about Spooky Tooth, but uh, I, mean, I remember the name, but you know, I, I wasn't paying a whole lot of money for these records. A little bit more than I normally do. But, okay, an Alto, uh, Alco, I mean, uh, Atco, Atlantic Label, subsidiary. Uh, the Two Sides of Mary Wells, and this is from 1966. Al Cooper, I Stand Alone. The Kingston Trio. Uh, th these next records, uh, a lady that, that has a booth uh, there or has a set up there uh, at that same uh, antique shop, uh, she said, I've got some records here. If you want to take a look at them. And I, and I took a look at them. I ended up buying these five Gave her 10 bucks, which is more than they were really worth. Uh, but I didn't have change for 10. I had a 10 in my pocket. So I said, I, I'll give you 10 bucks for me. Uh, went through records and told her if she had anything of any real value. The only thing she had any real value, uh, no real value, but, uh, you know, a $5 record. She had a James, the best of the James gang. I said, you know, you can get five bucks for that, you know. But the rest of these are dollar records or less or, or no, no market for it all. Kingston Trio, of course, you can find these for a dollar all day long. Uh, and this has got Tom Dula on it. I thought this was interesting. Lena Horn and Harry Belafonte doing Porgy and Bess. Boy, wasn't Lena Horn just a beautiful, beautiful lady? There's another picture. Of it. Harry wasn't bad looking either, was he? Uh, but Lena. Mm. And. Uh, Billy Graham uh, Grammar Sunday guitar, just a, a gospel guitar album, and this is really the only one I really wanted. I would have paid her a little bit more for that, but since I, but not much more. 
you know, this is this is only a two dollar record, maybe three dollar record. Uh, and I pay two dollars a piece for these records. Johnny Cash, uh, and uh, I mean, John, excuse me, Johnny Paycheck, and uh, she's all all I got. Don't take her, she's all I got. This is just before he went out. Well, I think this was from '72. Johnny Paycheck. Chester, what you doing over there, boy? And finally, you see it, you gotta buy it. Herb Albert's Tijuana Brass, whipped cream and other delights. How could you pass that one up, right? Uh, Dolores, Chester, you know what I'm talking about? Dolores Erickson. Chester. Uh, and this is a stereo. I don't know if it's a stereo version or not. Maybe it's maybe it's the mono. But I just see one of these and I buy it. It, it is stereo. I see one of these and I buy it because it is the Dolores Erickson cover. That is not whipped cream, by the way. What is it? Shaving cream. The whipped cream melted too quickly under the lights. Okay. Chester, come here. Say hey to everybody. All right. Chester says hey. Although they won't look at you. And I'll sign off. Uh, everybody, be kind to your neighbors. Because remember, we're all neighbors in this world. we got to get along. Yeah, good look there, Chester. Everybody take care. <laughs>